That is a more realistic frog than I anticipated. I thought it was going to be a cute little frog, but nope. nope. <laughs> That's just a normal that ass frog. frog is getting. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. And then joined every week by Jordan Swap, Pedro Mateus, oh. and together with you, Shut Around Lee. Dynamic, watching live. It's Cocaine Ultron, our powers combined. What's up? What's new, Big Chonky Show? And yeah, we just had somebody like, might as well buy Arch. Spoilers, stick around, we'll tell you about that. <laughs> Maybe when you're older or like, whatever just go to the timestamp if you're watching on youtube you, just gotta, you gotta bend over backwards you gotta like clench your butt cheeks and like make sure that your pelvis is pointing to the side the sky that's how you that's how valve does an arch yes gentlemen i'm a little bit excited i finally got the um i've been working on something for about a month putting it together because i always want to get people interested in computing and just what are those silly things i had an idea of like the box 64 raspberry pi people were playing games we were talking about people using risk v in box 64 to play the witcher and i'm like man this thing can play games maybe it can play because we didn't get a lot of games from like let's say 99 till 20 20 <laughs> on linux but boy oh boy did we get a lot of linux servers for games during that time x86 and x86 64 servers I wonder if I could run those on a Raspberry Pi, not just any, but like the little tiny Raspberry Pi, a Pi Zero W2, something that's going to draw about a watt of power. So I've done that experiment. I fired my tracer around out there and I got all the tools together to test it out, recorded it. I got the preview video up for patrons over on Interfacing Linux. That'll be out within a very exhaustive write up, very, very fun read uh, later, probably next week for everybody on the web zone. But to stick with that, I'm, I'm going to slowly become the um, Linux uh, single board computer guy without like a dead body collection in his backyard. Welcome back to explaining computers. Has Jeff Yearling been murdering people? I don't know. No, 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 no not, not Jeff. Pedro knows exactly. And some people in the audience are like, yeah, like, yeah. Who's, who, by all means, computers. is a com. <laughs> lovely human being. We're making a joke. But I wouldn't be surprised. Uh no, Banana Pie got in touch, and they're like, hey, do you want anything? And I'm like, I want that dual 10 gig uh, board that you guys make for routers, and I want the Wi-Fi 7 card and all that. I'm like, sure, here you go. That's in the mail. That's going to be an adventure. You want to talk about building stuff? We were talking about that in the pre-pre-super shows and about like building models and kits and stuff like that. The more I'm reading up on this, the more I'm like, oh boy, I'm going... This is not going to save me much in the way of money because I was like, I have to buy everything for this. This is not a Raspberry Pi, man. Later on in the show, we're going to be talking about like frees and puppies. It very much seems like a free puppy thing. It, it's uh, almost like a white elephant gift, dude. It very <laughs> much is. But I got to say, the it is a bit appealing to build your own router, like a good router, like a solid quad core 4 gig NVMe. That's something that you can run containers on and it's going to run OpenWRT out of the box dual 10 gig and a bunch of one gig on it and the latest wi-fis so stay tuned for that you can keep track of uh, everything i'm up to i got i usually keep most of that stuff posted on the interfacing linux web zone but jordan uh, you now understand you've retracted all of your previous hatred and vitriol towards the people who play power washing simulator have you not sir i have <laughs> i hate just, them like, so 80 much percent of it so much so that I just wish death on anyone who has ever purchased that game. No, got a power washer. Um, got a bunch of power tools because gotta gotta fix stuff in the backyard. So getting getting into the the woodworking game. Uh, yeah, that, that 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 that's that's been it. Oh, I did I did a magic tournament last week. I did yeah. two. I two out of did three? not do two, two out of three. Did not do terribly. I had a I had two real dirty fucking wins though. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I'll, 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 allow me to impress upon you my skill as a Magic the Gathering player. No, I, I, I am immediately setting the stage of like back room poker room, like dimly lit. <laughs> yeah, cigar, cigar smoke Shot everywhere. Shot glasses lined up, yeah. Yeah, pe people have like hands on like what is ostensibly <laughs> right. a lump of that is right. the firearm. Yeah, both of you have crew in, behind mm -hmm. you. Uh -huh. Yeah, ex ex exactly. <laughs> No, my, uh, my, my, my first game, I got completely curb stomped. That was my, my one loss. Second game, I tied one and one, and there was 10 minutes left on the clock for the third game. And like a fucking bitch, I stalled. I, I, I stalemated, 
and I managed to win with a with a life total lead. So and then the, <laughs> which was I I don't feel good about that, but. He was, he was, he was like, if I had drawn one land, you would have lost. And I'm like, but you didn't. So I won. Um, <laughs> nice. And, they, and then the, uh, the last one, the guy like did not draw any lands in like both of the games. And I felt really bad because it's like walking into that kindergarten and just kicking some four year olds in the face and being like, I'm the champion. But it does a wonder uh, for your self-esteem. If you look past that. Yeah. Once, once, once you look past <laughs> that and go, I win motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, so I, I won I'm, against I'm, a twelve-year-old. <laughs> I mean, the, you know what? That twelve-year-old's been grinding that game harder than <laughs> one so Jordan the, has. The 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 dude it was actually like fifty something. He was like older right. than I was. Okay. <laughs> he he, he kind of looked at, he kind of looked like the jump to conclusions guy from Office Space a little bit. The, you know, the guy, even the guy, he, he, even as like a like a teenager, I understood that like that dude had the most important job at that company. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and the older you get, the more you realize that, like, <laughs> he, he he was the guy who actually like got the requirements and turned them into something. That he was the somebody who used. could speak to the sales weasels and the engineers. He was that flush communication. Pedro Mateus, how are you doing? Speaking of flush Hi. communication, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, bad communication is just my middle name. But uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> I haven't played with power tools. I've actually I spent most of today. Because I saw that I still had the original Neverwinter Nights, the non-enhanced edition, mm -hmm. the native Linux version, from that uh, 20-something step that I wrote in 2015. Um, and it was still there. It was still in the same folder. So I started it up. It, the game itself worked just fine. The videos, no luck. The, it wasn't the Bing player because I could start the Bing player and point it at the video and it would play just fine. So it was like the library that the game tried to load that wasn't working. And getting that to compile on modern distros required me to download uh, an RPM from Fedora 32 <laughs> that, that contained libelf.a. That. <laughs> that was the secret sauce once I... Uh, told it to no no use that library that it builds just fine and it worked <laughs> so you needed a different elf to play dungeons and dragons yes i needed a 32 okay. year old elf <laughs> so very young elf. on the shelf <laughs> it's kind of interesting when you get to the point in your life where you're like i need a complicated problem that'll work and linux <laughs> is great for that don't let anybody tell you differently like even if you get everything working just right on your linux machine you're every you, there, there's this whole other bizarre world. There's somebody in Discord right now who's like, I want to get Corel Linux running. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, no, the, that, no that adventure has been happening yeah. over the course of a week, and I'm like, but, but why? I, you I know guess what? Like, people yes, are bored. the rational part of your brain's like, but then you're like, why not? It's just like, <laughs> and, and yeah, and then you go, whatever, I don't have to do it. It's not my problem. <laughs> Unfortunately, introducing the horses. Unfortunately, and it's coming into my house week after week and stealing all my powerful tools it's the steam speaking of power tools the uh the the executives at rockstar have been shown that they can't mess with the linux community their 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 sales numbers will plummet sort of kind of not really uh well it, there was a uh, there was a, a, a drop in the sales position of grand theft auto 5 very I mean, very briefly down to down to 17th smidge. place oh well 11 places uh oh, no, for, it, for, keeps, for, it for, kept going down wait it's hang on hey, we, we need a live update let's let's just go ahead and go to the uh live cam here uh one uh, mm -hmm. nine, 20, uh, 20, uh, 20 there <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so you know pe people were I, I guess a couple people were really playing this on their steam deck this comes from uh from Val or from uh, Val putting out the announcement last week. Oh look, yeah, ba Battle Eye on on uh, Steam Deck for GTA Five is not supported. Yeah. Uh, because you know, Rockstar decided to do that. So uh, th this is the latest in customer protests. I don't I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if this lasts. Rockstar executives are certainly quick and in their little little booties. But again, you got to remember, kids, if it's online and the publisher hasn't explicitly listed Steam Deck support mm -hmm. on your own. Yes, if it's not Steam Deck certified, like, and that's I, that doesn't matter if you have a Steam Deck, if you're buying it for your, you know your catchy OS box, hmm? uh, make sure that's there if you want that guarantee. Everything else, you know, you're playing with a napalm. But 
I just want to give a shout out to my brothers and sisters. We were talking about that in the pre pre super shows, and they're they're people still like legitimately grinding out Cybertruck twenty seventy seven. Like, and it's been holding that constant six. Like these top, they haven't they haven't really moved a whole lot. By the way, GTA fell fourteen spots since last week. That to give you an yeah. idea how many people are like I don't want to play with you anymore. <laughs> and a week later, you know, even after the show, Valve came out and like, hey, we're in contact with the Rockstar. We're working on it. TM hashtag Valve time. Put that together in your head. I don't think old Rocky cares what no. I said last week. They're just like, okay, whatever. Also. What are Valve going to do? Uh, like I said last week, they're just going to send them an email. It's like, hey, how about you send the Battle Eye people an email to say that you want to enable that on uh, they probably on Steam did. OS. And, you know, we, <laughs> I looked at the chart yes, you know, last week when we talked about this, and it looked like it didn't like legitimately shave off you know, a couple of thousand users, which might have been cheaters. Trust me, getting rid of cheaters is a good thing. And, uh, and the Steam reviews like bounced back you know, by Monday. Now, you know, people have a real, legitimate, crippling addiction to that game, and that's cool. Enjoy it. Maybe it'll get sorted out, but yeah, it sucks if that was your gem. That's how you played your GTA on the go. No more. But, got some good news. Actually, Valve did a good. Yeah. Uh, why they did it? Well, that's still up for discussion, but they've removed... Also, yeah. Yeah, they've removed the... Um, forced arbitration clause from the uh, subscriber agreement on Steam, which is completely counter what everyone else in the industry is doing these days, which is everyone's enforcing uh, forced arbitration. And Valve is, no, we're, we're, we're removing that, and if people want to take us to court, they can take us to court the old-fashioned way. At the same time, I saw Katana posted on... Um, Discord, it's like, oh, hey, Valve did a thing. And then a few minutes later, I see this post on um, Mastodon from uh, Mr. SteamDB saying, Steam has updated its subscriber agreement to remove any mention of an arbitration agreement and class action waiver. Valve's arbitration provision was found to be an enforceable. And there's a little screenshot of a court document uh, explaining exactly what happened. Uh, I'm guessing that's uh, American, so in uh, August 9th, 2024, Valve, um, it, as a result of the Wolfire lawsuit that they're currently going under, uh, a number of people raised a complaint regarding the whether or not it, it was enforceable to have that uh, arbitration clause, and since those people were all individually represented and technically were not a part of the Wolfire suit, they all raised a complaint, and Valve lost on every count. So, you know, it, it wouldn't be the first time that Valve uh, did something after they lost in court. There, there is also some tricky bit, because when you actually do have forced arbitration, you do say that, like, yes, uh, and at least at least in uh, Discords, I don't know specifically about um, I don't know about uh, Valves, but uh, in Discords, when they do say that they will pay for the arbitrator and so on and so forth, um, and there have been and th this is pretty common in the industry, and there have been also some innovations in ma uh, automation of mass submitted arbitration claims that which all need to be um, assessed and uh, and dealt with individually. So maybe it might be worth it to open yourself up to class action, or else you have to go pay for an arbitrator fifty billion times for each individual complaint. Uh, people in Quebec, though, less enthusiastic about this because they weren't subject to this at all. Anyways, so. Aww. <laughs> we did find out something, though. If you've opened your Steam client this week, you found something and you're like, wait a minute, what? Yeah, we, we learned that there's a like we're really super serial notification on Valve and it's yellow. What? What is this? What's going on? I didn't notice. And I clicked on you. Y'all better use that when you release Half-Life 3. All right. Because, like, you normally you get your notification. What is it? It's like light blue, right? And then a little uh, bell. Green? Blue, wait, green. There's a blue one for Steam announcements, which is the okay. little megaphone. Right, and right, right. The green one for regular note. This, this thing was a bar to the left of that that was yellow. Mm, and so it's number, updated number to whatever click you got to click. Then you had to click a tick box and all that. It, they got, like, the emergency broadcast system built into Steam. Didn't know about that. But yeah, man, Steam users, you can sue Valve. Now, with class action lawsuits, whatever, that made sense. 
somewhere down the line. Uh, and as is tradition, Valve has not provided an explanation, nor will they. No. Feel free to speculate. You, you, you can sue them for an explanation. They'll there let you, you do go. it now. <laughs> Galaxy Brain. <laughs> They'll kill your uh, Steam account in the process like they have. <laughs> no, no, Gabe will just come to your house and kill you. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Gabe's nice. He'll show up and like bring you the Steam Deck too and be like, trade? And you'll be like, fine. I, I'll, I, I'll give you this really cool Team Fortress 2 hat. <laughs> fine. <laughs> Ah, uh, but you know that's that's not the only thing that Valve has given out. No, nope. according to the internet, Valve has bought Arch. Arch is sold out. Make it rain! Oh no, we we, we got to run away. We we all got to run Gentoo. It's the only old school. This is Slack from the there, Arch Linux mailing list. Yeah, we all remember Arch. You remember when Arch was underground before it went mainstream? Valve is buying infrastructure for a build service and secure signing enclave. For the Arch team, they say we are excited to announce that Arch Linux is entering into a direct collaboration with Valve. Valve has generously provided backing money for two critical projects. I just wanted to clear that up because, like, I saw the internet do the internet thing earlier today. <laughs> and they're like, they're going to buy Arch and they're going to control Arch. And I'm like, not yet. And, and, and I mean, like, would that be the worst thing? We have Canonical in charge of Ubuntu. We have IBM in charge of Red Hat. Would if 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 if, if there's going to be another corporate sponsored Linux, would, is Valve the worst one? I'd rather that than Oracle. Right. Yeah. yeah considering the alternatives, yeah, Valve's. <laughs> but 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 I mean, like, and 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 here's the thing: it's it's not like they're um, it's not like they're 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 stepping into the project. They're donating infrastructure because, as it turns out, Valve is kind of a huge consumer of. Arch Linux as as a product, uh, they kind of made it the center of their flagship console. So, do you think yeah, somebody it, over at uh, Canonical is like, man, we fucked that up, man? Like, oh, oh yeah. No, you, you're you're not allowed to say that out loud though, or else you'll get fired. Trust oh, me. Mark, okay, Mark, fair Mark enough. Mark will be very upset. <laughs> uh, yeah, they do say like these projects. Uh, it, it's to help them like build their business quicker. Like when I say business, their internal like software, like the stuff yeah. that gets you the arch to the arch plate in front of you so you can yeah that's good build, build, build system servers package signing as well it's going to be important because yeah. you know you you want to make sure that the software you're installing on your system is the actual software that you intend to be installing right uh if we Especially... got to speculate uh this pretty much confirms that we're going to get a stealth drop to the steam deck 2 when next week week after next oh no the, the, this this is steam os ga confirmed oh okay <laughs> with a <laughs> <play. laughs> Built-in support for um, like everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it will support your PlayStation Five. It'll support your Xbox One. It'll support. You can just ah, install yes. it. The Valve yeah. Portal. Yes. In, 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 install it on your iPhone. It just works. Nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do we got? This. Wales! Oh no. Yes, yeah, skies above. We're we're talking about new games. We got the one uh, this week, and it has a demo. And you have you you're you're playing a man guiding a whale across the sky, and you gotta you gotta protect the whales. This is basically a psychedelic Star Trek four Finding Nimoy. Um, yeah, and it's it's a roguelike. You can upgrade your guy. It looks very very pretty. Um, it's got some cool soundtracks, and yeah, wh whales, man. What what more do you want? Whales. That that, that soundtrack slaps. Uh, the 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 one that they have on the first trailer. I do genuinely hope that song is the one that they use for the game proper because that upbeat, However, there's like, you know, the, um, yeah, I can do this now, type of now, song. I, yeah. I, I do have, I do have to slightly spoil a later part of the podcast because, oh, no. because the developer of, uh, of Sky's Bug, Hungry Dingo, they also have problems submitting Wayland protocols, Wayland protocols, and thus the game is X only. Wait, what? Origin system requirements. Yeah, if you scroll down to the system requirements. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, X, let me see more. X11. Oh, no. Yeah. Huh? No, no, no whale and. I mean, that's what X whaling's for, but you know. <laughs> whale. Whale and. You're going to get you struck like, by lightning I, just for that, dude. I am very proud of my highly clever joke, okay? <laughs> oh, no, no. It, it was great. It was, I mean, somewhere like there's a dad very proud of you. Uh, 
<laughs> this, this so, looks, Scott, Scott's heart just exploded. <laughs> <laughs> that was the hot. That was the hot sauce he was eating last week. <laughs> uh, fair, fair enough. <laughs> listen, listen, it, 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 it got it started for me. I, I, I was, I was the last bit. It was like the yeah, char yeah. pickles, right? Uh, I, I, looking I was, at this man, uh, like it's got a giant well floating around, and I'm like, there better be a bowl of petunias somewhere in this game, or I'm going to be extraordinarily disappointed. Also, it does come across as like. If you really like escort missions, this entire game's an escort mission. Yes, it do, it does very much see that. And you know, the, we got to stay away from that bowl of petunias. That bowl of petunias is a bad man. I'm telling you, man. There's a reason nobody ever knew what it was up to, and it's all for the betterment of humanity. More importantly, there's a demo though. Yeah, we'll go download it, play around with it, and see what's coming up next. We have, we have so much frog we have so much frog talk this week. There's just a lot of <laughs> a lot of riveting happening. It's the mirage, man. Added a new hero. So apparently forums.playdeadlock.com Valve developer post and like there's a nice little meme thing here. You know the two button, you gotta make that a uh, hard choice. One, ban cheater immediately, and the other button says turn into frog. Ha. Huh. Let's take a look at the video. Well, yeah, there there's a frog hopping around uh, the that, uh, deadlock that, map. That that is a, that is a more realistic frog than I anticipated. I thought it was going to be a cute little frog, but nope. That, nope. That's just a normal that ass frog, frog. Is getting wrecked now. Why is this? Why is this? Well, it's delightful. I love it. There's a nice little change log about all the stuff that's going to be going on this week. But they said when a user is detected as cheating during a game session, opponents will be given a choice between banning them immediately and ending the match, or turning the cheater into a frog for the rest of the game then banning them afterwards. I, I take issue with that. There should be a uh, thing for a 30-day permafrog where they can still play. <laughs> they just got the baleful polymorph on them. That's just, mm -hmm. a, I mean, play air quotes. They can hop around and get killed to death in the map because as a frog, you're completely unarmed and you're just a yeah. slow-moving yeah. target that everybody instantly shoots. Why? Because you're a filthy cheater. Gentlemen, I fear uh, not. No, I don't even fear. I bow my head. I, I tip my non-existent hat because this is right up there with a giant red scorpion from Serious Sam 3, which if you don't know, if you had a pirated version of Serious Sam 3, there was a lovely thread of complaints of people really upset <laughs> at Crow Team because the game was like, you just couldn't finish it. There's this yeah, there giant was a giant red scorpion chasing you around the entire time and you couldn't kill it. That only showed up if it detected you had a pirated copy. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, there, there, there was a nasty one. Uh, Earthbound did that too, where it would just break on the final boss so you couldn't finish the game. Oh, nice. Uh, Batman, uh, Batman Arkham Asylum. Um, it had the the glide mechanic. If it detected that you were playing on a pirated copy, the glide wouldn't work. Right. So there's a bunch of people going, I can't make the jump to get into the asylum itself because you have to glide in order to get in. Yeah, you can <laughs> run, but you can't. Had that other one that didn't detect if your PC port was bad, your Linux port was canceled. Oh, that's the feral special. <laughs> no, no, that, 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 that was after it spent five weeks downloading Very the latest version of Xbox Live. Uh, Linux arcade. hackers from playing your game. Yes, <laughs> dude, dude, dude. My, my story about Batman: Arkham Asylum was I got a copy, I tried to install it, and then I had to install Xbox Live Arcade each sequential update date again and oh, again God. and again and again and again until it me in the fucking game. At which point I'm like, I don't even want to do this anymore. <laughs> Dude, um, I remember like when Proton came out, right? Uh, we got like the Proton announcement. It was generally available. You got it. And they're like, you can play all these old games. And I'm like, and I remembered uh, I had already bought my 2060, but I remembered when I bought the 980, it came with scratch off tickets, like redeemable uh, for one mm -hmm. of them was for one of the Batman games. And I'm like, I'll never use that at the time. Because I'm like, I'm never going to go through all the hoops of trying to get that set up with wine and all that. And I'm like, ah, oh, great, scratch it off, do it. And I was like, this is expired. Oh yeah, that's the, that's the worst part too. You gotta like redeem those keys right away. Yep. Yep. Extranium 1.0. Oh yeah. Ah. Now uh we've talked about Extranium many times. It's the boomer shooter that has a uh native Linux client. And uh it, it's been in early access for a long, long time, but no more. On September twenty-fifth, twenty twenty-four, it was released. It's available. You can play um uh, all three of the chapters, and I can actually finally play through it because i played the first couple of levels like yeah i'm done for this it's uh very much my jam so i i, I can actually finish it now 
I, I look forward to it. It's um, it's nine ninety nine over here, probably a bit more in the U.S. I don't know, <laughs> but it is it it if you like the um, you can't look up or down, can't jump, uh, Wolfenstein Dude. type of. Dude. Wolfenstein. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, of, uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me go ahead and uh, help you children out. The separator between Wolfenstein and Doom is stairs. Yes. <laughs> Which there aren't any here. It's there. all flat planes. Okay, but there's no stairs as Wolfenstein. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Rolling on the field. Uh, it's yeah, got a chainsaw, it is, though. It does have a chainsaw. It has shotguns. That, that, it has that, grenade launchers. It ha- the grenades have physics, which is kind of uh, dissonant. <laughs> With the whole Wolfenstein type of thing, but yes, it is very much uh, a boomer shooter in all its glory, and I genuinely enjoyed what I've played thus far, and I've I suspect I will enjoy all of it. <laughs> you know, I want to give a little bit of credit though, man, because uh, you know, taking the time to like just test, right, to mm-hmm. see what you can get it up and running on, and like, hey, it runs on some good. Uh, <laughs> AMD Athlon 2, man. Athlon 2, so, so, Celeron, someone, someone and Centrino. <laughs> yeah, so, so someone had some old netbooks like kicking around. They're like, this is run neat. Yeah. I thought that was pretty dope. Uh, yeah, dude get, did a good job. He's like, oh, probably if it'll run, it launches. And that's what you're looking for. Like, I, I've kind of pushed for that a couple of times of like, if we could have like verified system requirements or like base minimum requirements, I think that'd be good for us all. All right. Uh, where's my scalies at? No, only only furries. Oh. Only furries in the house. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta watch the live version to catch that conversation. <laughs> Cowabunga bitches. TM and T. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Shredder's Revenge is, well, it's just new characters, but they're reptiles with hair. How much would you pay 399 That's what you gotta pay. You get two characters and some free remixes have been added to the OST. I, I guess. See, I think for me, the only fun thing about this, I'm not interested in playing as either one of these characters. Like, I'm turtled out of this game. I probably got like another five years before I want to revisit it. I was like, do we get new levels? They're like, no. But who are who are the two characters, Jordan? One of them is a uh, a lady lizard. Yeah, what one, one one of them is a uh, lady lizard. Vina, uh, that was Mona Lisa, and uh, the other one was uh, the other one. I forget, I forget the name of. Uh, he was, uh, was what, what, related, Mondo related to the punk, <laughs> Mondo Gecko related related in part to the punk frogs. I did a little bit of perusing in the uh, in the TMNT wiki. Okay, uh, I just want to know where, where, where the hell is Mona Lisa, right? From the live action show. Talk about like sexy live action turtles. <laughs> you bring this up. My first thought was like, this is always fascinating to revisit a property that like, I, I checked out of uh, Ninja Turtles, like late 80s, early 90s. You know, like 30 plus years ago, and like these characters, I had no idea they existed in like the universe. You, you just kind of think something's just going to be static, right? And when you revisit yeah. it, you're like, no, this thing's continued on without me. I'm like, how dare you? And, 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 and a lot of the stuff, it was there for a while. It just never like filtered down into the cartoon because like the comics were doing shit for, for a while before the cartoons picked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, then the, and, and the cartoons ended and there were like multiple iterations. So they slowly trickled this stuff in over time as well. Well done. We definitely played it in the after shows and like right when it came out, we played it way probably too much. We even get like six players in and it's just, it's not even playable, but we, it's we, still we a did, good we time. We did the uh, infinite, infinite uh, battle mode. That one was... That one, that one was... Fuck that elevator. <laughs> yeah, that, ele- that elevator sucked. <laughs> Getting able to play as the bosses though, that was fun. That, that was kind of fun and multiplayer, it's great. Uh, single player, you'd probably be bored after you played through it the first time and it's really designed for the type of person who wants to go through it and grind it and yeah, like per- no damage runs and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah the, 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 they have those challenges built in. But uh, yeah, the, these characters, April O'Neil is probably the best character uh, in Master Shredder because they have very clear color distinctions. These two are uh, perfectly Pantone to perpetuate They're protagonist green. Green biopia. I, <laughs> I, I will also throw in Master Splinter and Casey Jones. They are visually different enough. That you can yeah. see them, but if you're playing as the the respective turtles, you cannot tell who the fuck is who. No, no, here's, here's these the two thing. are the exact same color as the turtles. <laughs> don't 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 fall for this because when literally everything on the screen explodes at one time, it don't matter what color your character is. You can't see it. 
That's true. You can't you know, see shit. It, it's how, how quickly you can see them after the explosion's gone. Because, yeah, if you're playing as a Splinter or April O'Neil, it's like, ah, there's the yellow, how there's the pink. How you have to gauge it in this game is, here's how you get to gauge every character. The amount of time you spend trying to control the wrong character. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was me. Yeah, right, you're like, oh, wait, that's not, oh, here I am, I'm up there. Oh, and and I was doing a good job. Yeah, and then you get thrown, and you're yeah. like, wait, where the fuck am I now? This is problematic. <laughs> that's going to wrap us up for the steamy bits this week. We want to get into the replacement for X11. X11's been around for a long time. You might be running it right now. You know, best case scenario, you should never have to worry about it, you know? And we're going to be talking about Wayland, and best case scenario, once that transition is nice and smooth, it's just going to be there. It's not going to be a problem with it. But Joshi, you might know him. Wait, 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 that name sounds familiar. Uh, he's worked on a project or two from Valve, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's the reason that D9VK exists oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, got merged thing. into DXVK. Okay, yeah. Heard about that. And uh, he uh, also uh, brought up a number of issues in the past pertaining to Wayland and Gamescope. Well, there was that one time he showed up to the OBS project. <laughs> yes we we got some game scope capture for you and they're like no he's like but this is going by your own guidelines and you're like no no it, sorry yeah. it's tuesday and the moon's not full <laughs> fuck you yeah <laughs> jo josh has really taken on a couple like sisyphean tasks in the community and we really got to thank him for just like trying to get the work the, done. the real froggy boy <laughs> absolutely which is good i want to give him credit because dude's like 19 years old yeah, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> fighting the real fight, man. Uh, now this is about Wayland, though. Oh, we're talking about Frog Python V1 protocol. What's that? Sounds kind of crazy. What effectively Josh is proposing is a new set of protocols that exist alongside Wayland, where people, where the uh, the merge requirements are a lot more lax. People are able to rapidly iterate. It's going to probably be a more continuously released project, um, and. Then with the with the intention that these things will then be upstreamed into the Wayland uh, into Wayland protocols once they have had time to sit and be tested and be used in a way that is not blocked by the current Wayland governance. Um, and I, I mean, there there is absolutely a risk of split brain here, because if you actually go into the Frog Protocols project, they're like they, they do recommend. Yes, you should probably support both uh, both versions. So you should have the Frog Protocols version and the Wayland Protocol version. Um, for the sake of consistency, if one application is using one before they transition to another, and that that can be problematic from a software uh, dependency standpoint, um, we might even see a world where we have um, Wayland is dropped for Frog protocols outright, or we might have another Wayland versus Mirror situation because we've seen what fragmentation can do uh, in terms of harming progress in that way. There, it's it's like it's clear clear, and uh, we we have uh, we have responses as well from Mike Blumenkrantz, supergoodcode.com. He has a response and he said, I get it. I understand that the protocol the protocols are moving way too slow in Wayland. People are being cautious. Uh, perhaps we need to introduce a new class of protocols. Currently, there is staging and stable. Staging is not moving fast enough. So now we need to add experimental. He proposed a method of uh, essentially using one merge across to track the protocol, have periodically periodic merge points into uh, experimental. Anything that goes into experimental has to be intended to be going into stable so you can't just put your random shit in there for funsies which is something you could do potentially in frog protocols um and yeah with with the with the with the uh they're, they're uh, eventually having some guidance with getting it stable and there's there's a bit of a gem in there where they're like yeah if people aren't paying attention to your merge request spam memes in the in the slack channel or the discord channel until people <laughs> Jordan, uh, i'm gonna ask you i mean you're doing a little bit of the devops these days right so you get a, you get a, you get a little bit of feel for this what do you think the pushback is as to having, you know, when I, I look at it from like an outside view, I immediately think of Debian with, you know, the unstable testing mm -hmm. stable. Like, why is that not something that you can apply to Wayland? And, and th 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 this is what uh, effectively what uh, Blumenkrantz is proposing. Right where you mm -hmm. you would have you would have a stable protocol space where the ABI is locked. You could have a staging protocol space where it is mostly finished but it's still getting work. And then you have uh, the unstable protocols, which is high iteration, unstable interface, and so on. Move and so fast, forth, which, break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And keep it, while keeping it still within the Wayland scope, so that we don't have these sort of fragmentation issues. So Although, you're saying like our current setup with Wayland right now was like everything has to be done perfect, and that's causing a bit of a deadlock. 
a, a, a little a little bit uh or or uh there, things get lost in discussion where it's like the the implementation details are being argued when you know some work could be done and then some comments could be made after the fact and you could actually see how the thing works and and so on and so forth because right right now a lot of the discussion with introducing new protocols is theoretical what if this what if this what if this there isn't a lot there isn't a good way to like gather that information uh in 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 a way that exposes your code to the wider wayland user base so that it can be validated and it's also the issue that well uh apparently the bar for uh getting third-party protocols on wayland or, or you know having Wayland protocols be become official instead of being third party is not that high, according to Simon Sir. And yet everyone immediately disagreed with that because as it turns out, it is that high. Or if it isn't, something else is getting in the way, like Jordan was alluding to. Uh, the seriously, a round of applause for Joshi, and I will applaud him if he keeps doing stuff like this. Until my hands clip together, and if we are living in the Matrix, that's technically possible. Uh, but the he drops in the yeah, we're already doing this with SteamOS, you know, the um, operating system that's in a commercially successful games console already. So it's not about whether or not it works. We're doing it. We've discovered that it works. We're just finding a way to implement it that doesn't require going through the politics. Well, and, so, so, so there, there, there's also the slight plea of please stop making us cram stuff into GameScope. None of this yes. stuff actually <laughs> belongs in GameScope. It should be in Waylands. We can do it. We've proved that it works. Please uh, yeah, take our code. Uh, Come on, Jordan. You, you need to load the game score, uh, GameScope service. Right. Well, yeah. When, when, when GameScope, GameScope starts. D. Yeah. yeah well, when, 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 that's the separation. We're have GameScope and then Wayland and then X, yeah. right? Like, again. <laughs> You get, a, the, you, the you, you get a boot between, game scope, and you can load the kernel. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 the protocols and the uh, compositor, because if each of the compositors has to handle this stuff themselves, then we start getting into problems. That that's the real fragmentation right there. Uh, but yeah, it is this point, and he, Josh, you actually put it very well. Having the Steam Deck GPU stall because the CPU is too busy trying to sort the queue when first in first out has already been in place for years and a bunch of games are using first in first out for their render queues this is not ideal by any means or measure no, so let, let's play the uh, devil's <laughs> hamster on this though because i can see the uh, Wayland team going yes you need the special thing for your special handheld gaming thing we get it we'll get there but we need to do it our way well, and and again, that 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 alludes to the the government governance issue that right. uh, Bloom yes. is talking about, <laughs> and yeah, like there. That's going to be. I think that's going to be the pushback, and like there's, I I can see you know you, you try to like look at both sides, other than like you know I know this is modern day internet. You ever want to dunk on something, but they're like this is our system. This is how it works. Yeah, uh, I, th I think Blumenkrantz brings up a really good analogy. It's op open source as free as in puppies, right? Like, it's the, the, the code is free, but there's still a lot of effort involved. You still need to feed the puppy. You still need to mm -hmm. walk the puppy. You still got to, like, put the effort in to ensure that the puppy is still alive. And there uh, is at, a at the lot of, of danger there for somebody coming in, like, submitting a pull request, and they got everything together, and it gets hung up. What happens? Like, people move on. They got other stuff they got to go do. They lose interest in, like, what they're working yeah. on. And by the time... <laughs> The machine is in a part where like, hey, because I see this all the time in the OBS project where somebody will get pinged, you know, 19 months later and like, hey, have you ever finished it? And they're like, I graduated, dude. Like, I'm done. Like, I don't care. I like, have a real job now. I'm a yeah. potato farmer. Like, and we that, that's had. the big thing, because you have people who are willing to put the work in, who are willing to feed and walk the puppy as long as they see that their work is you know, at least has a chance of being implemented when they submit a merge request and it sits there for months with no activity, none whatsoever. And then some person comes back and says, I mean, the bar's not that high, then what is it? What is I, it I, exactly? <laughs> I, 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 do, I do like that Mike's pro proposal does take that into account. It does time box a lot of things. And it also makes it clear that like, 
knacks are not permanent no's. And uh, if your stuff times out, that does not automatically uh, count as a knack. You just need to reapply and it will get re-looked at again. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It, 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 we, we, we have, we have this tendency of trying to solve human problems with technical solutions. And this is very much a human problem. This is just, yeah. so, so I think yeah. it's a good idea. What Josie, what, what's being proposed. I mean, whatever comes out of it, like to have the, have a staging section for Waylon to get that in front of other people and start hammering on it because mm -hmm. waylon has been around for 15 years and it's getting there. You know, we, when we, when you get that opportunity and to all the brave soldiers out there testing it and production. Be the real MVPs now, and I, 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 I think there's there's also the point of like it's all it's so close, and the last stuff is just like this wheel grinding, churning stuff, and people are getting real mad about that because we're almost there. Almost. Well, I mean, it, it's like one of those things. Wayland's the new thing, and the new thing's been around long enough to accrue technical debt. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, like and again, like I said, like there's there still might be another new thing by the time this all comes together. We don't know. We're just along for the ride. Pedro, I got a question for you though. Mm. How come everything involving Genshin is an app looks like an absolute hellscape? Oh yeah, it, ah! it is. It's very much targeted at that crowd. I, I shouldn't say anything. I too am a massive weeaboo, but you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. Loadouts for Genshin Impact is uh, basically an open source implementation uh, of a spreadsheet. It's a spreadsheet with the pictures of your waifus and your spreadsheet waifus. And you can um, Eve online. Yes, but with more anime girls. Uh, so the, Eve online <laughs> with more anime Have girls. Have you just so trust me? That there's like a whole new level of anime girls Eve that is not. No, Eve. I would say it's about perfect and fifty-fifty, man. Yeah, I, 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 again, I, I did not stutter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just saying, there's a whole new level, and Genshin's on that level. But yeah, you can build it. It works on Linux, and uh, the the game technically what does doesn't it do? work what on is a Linux. Loadout? What is but a... there, the loadouts is basically the kind of equipments and artifacts that you have on each of the uh, the waifus. Okay, and you, you basically you can plan it out using this, and it'll give you the stats, what you'll get for attack, what you'll get for magic, what you'll get for resistances, and everything else. So even though the game technically isn't doesn't work on Linux because it has an anti cheat that isn't supposed to work on Linux. There is a way to play it. You can find it if you search <laughs> hard enough. Uh, you can find a way to play uh, Genshin Impact on Linux. Is this Linux something and, you're supposed to be cagey about? Uh, yes, Why? because it's one of those um, the developers aware of it, but they don't want it to be popular. <laughs> because uh, so then the, the, they the, might have to do something about it. <laughs> the, 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 it's it's a Yuzu situation. <laughs> Shut up about we all we all know about it. Shut up about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, it, it is basically if you're into Genshin Impact already, or if you're playing it on your phone because it is available on, on Android as well, uh, and you want to get into the min-maxing and the spreadsheeting of all of the different characters. There, there you go. It's got a pretty GUI to go on uh, it instead of just using LibreOffice Calc. <laughs> I, I, as as a DevOps human, I do like the fact that it's configuration languages. I thought There's you were going to say, love me some Genshin Impact. <laughs> as a DevOps engineer, <laughs> I am a huge weeaboo. There we go. Sugoi! <laughs> ah, no, um, no uh, I, 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 I love that your configuration language options are between YAML and good. Good. <laughs> Yamal, the, the opposite of good. <laughs> it's there. The three of us are not really into the impact, but we, you know, we had um, Subic join us a couple of weeks ago in the after shows and like explain to us like mm -hmm. what the, the Hoyoverse, Hoyo yeah, and like why there's a ghost train flying through the galaxy or something. Like I got bits I'm, and pieces I'm, of Honkai Star Rail. <laughs> I'm just happy that there is actually a train, and I don't feel like a crazy person. There we go. Fair enough. Uh, everything's going to be in our show notes. Go check that out, linuxemcast.com. It'll be linked in the video description. Now, let me winks. Let's talk about this, man, because uh, humans are like we're pattern recognition monkeys, and something about this makes my brain think of the Godot logo. Don't ask me why. I, I can see like 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 a, like a robot hand from a cartoon or something. I can I can see that. Uh, it's maybe the eyes and whatever. We're looking at that. Look at that. That's a gerbil. That's a dribble you can make 
all by yourself. Well, you know, you might want to like get some help, but there's a complete <laughs> bill of materials list. But this is a gaming mouse, like a legitimate like gaming mouse that unfortunately is going to run you about like 200 bucks. But let's scroll down a little bit. This thing, it can do the lean. Look at that. Look at this. It's got a nice little PDF with everything that you need. Arduino Pro microcontroller. Um, they do say it's a bit heavy, though. Clocking at it, 130 grams. Because apparently that falls under heavy for a gerbil these days, which just, yes, it doesn't. Under 100 grams, most uh, mice that are wireless anyway. Yeah, that's <laughs> lovely with your little lightweight, need a sandwich, bitch ass mouses. Uh, 130 grams. It, it fled, sneeze that off the desk. <laughs> I wouldn't even bother with that. I'd, I'd have to duct tape some uh, mouse weights to it. Do they make mouse weights? Please tell me they do. They, uh, they do. Yeah. Uh, I have one on my mouse. No, no, I want. <laughs> I need aftermarket mouse weights. L little, little tiny barbells to stick on yes. your mouse. Yes, that's what <laughs> I need. Or, or if you if you get like a little weight horn, a little like one and a half pound plate, you can just stick on the side. Oh man, uh, lots of parts. Everything is again. Just go to the show notes. Go check it out. The only thing that like made me like jump back from this is like the bill materials, like two hundred bucks. So. Uh, it's, it's it's like super configurable though you can like make basically just configure it to fit any sort of hand shape which is really nice um yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I like i like that idea yeah i like the uh, idea uh pedro you want one that's uh armidextrous though right yes you can uh, use it with as, both arms yeah as one of those uh you know assholes that had the unfortunate you, you you're a sinister <laughs> individual pedro that's what you are <laughs> <Yes. sinister. laughs> very much so of being uh, uh far more dominant with the left hand Mostly because I didn't have much of a choice, but uh, the <laughs> uh, so I appreciate the, the the ambidextrous mice like the Logitech G903. You can use it either hand. It gets like it has like um, eleven buttons and uh, th a total of thirteen different actions, and it is genuinely one of the best mice I've used thus far. So, if you give me a 3D print something that I can reuse the internals of this in it. I I'm down. Pedro, I, Pedro, I, I, Pedro. <laughs> if I just gave you that, but give them teach man to fish, give them an STL file though. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, open cap. <laughs> what 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 I want to see is someone take the take the accelerometers from the from the that other controller and stick them in here so you can I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I had to like look up my trackball, and it's like that's like three hundred plus grams, and I'm like that feels about right where I want a mouse. I, I, I like you know I, I'm that sucker. You know I, I like the big. I like the weight. I, I you know I I like me a weighty mouse too. I, I, I do. I, I genuinely don't understand. I know why because uh, people people are, want use to put wrists in, instead of the forearm. Yeah, that's, like that's why wrist, I, uh, um, the amount of pressure you're putting in your wrist purely focused on around. home invasion. You know, you don't want to be throwing a lightweight gerbil at somebody <laughs> kicking in your front door. You want some girth behind that. No, sp speaking of Xena, you got to do like the Xena scream while you're oh, swinging yeah. a, mouse, a corded mouse above your head. <laughs> you know, that would probably be more effective than anything else that you could do because like... Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Some, someone walks into you doing yeah. that mouse, they're like, no, hell no. Imagine if you like tried to... Th Bring it like doing some thieving, dude. Walks around the quarter slinging. You're like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I believe. I believe the. I believe the actual word is uulating. Unless it's like one of these, and you're like, oh, is that that project from GitHub I saw on Linux? Like, okay, then you have a company. Then your best friend. Yeah, then, then, yeah. Then, then it just collides with his head and shatters into a million pieces because it's three D printed, right? Like, <laughs> oh. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, one last bit before we get out of here. Uh, this is something we would give it a mention anyway, because, uh, you know, we talked about like the game preservation. Like one of the things we came up with in the after shows, because, you know, we had like like the real talk moments of like, what are some things that can be done here and in other places to like at least get the ball rolling, right? Other, you know, you got to attack something on multiple different angles. There's not going to be that silver chainsaw to fix everything. And I think this is a step in the right direction. Yeah, California has a new law on the books that makes it illegal to essentially use the word purchase to imply to uh, imply uh, any sort of digital purchases that are digital. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Buy or own to lease uh, le lease <laughs> acquiring a license. Th this, this is where it gets all lexically confusing. And this is kind of the point. There is a very, very lax definition of the word ownership 
uh, in our society. And a lot of companies have taken advantage of this. When you buy something, you don't actually buy the good or the service. You buy a license to access it for a limited amount of time. And what California wants you to do is make that abundantly clear on the label. You can't say, oh, you know, buy our game that requires a constant online connection to uh, some service online. It, this this is a subscription. This is not a permanent good that is um, that that you are that you are buying. And obviating that, I think, is is probably a uh, is is a good step because if as the, the execs say, we got to get used to not owning games. All right, cool. You got to get used to not telling us that we're buying something or owning anything. You got to tell mm -hmm. us that we're buying a license or leasing. They're gonna have to come up with some additional weasel word because a lot of these things just don't have a good ring to them. No, I'm definitely uh, down with this one. As like looking through this, man. This is going to be very interesting, uh, how it's going to have effects on digital storefronts. And that's why I went and found an article from PC Games and see if somebody brought this up for Steam. Because mm -hmm. for a lot of games, especially, you know, if you're playing it on your Linux machine, yeah, most of your games are going to be on Steam, like it or not. And, you know, yes, I know you. you yes, you with the Gog library, you know, you got the two terabytes, nothing. But you got games. That's cool. We're talking about Steam, though. Um, they can no longer use big fancy words like buy or purchase when advertising uh i think that's pretty interesting having to change up the wording which makes me you know the actual phrasing from prohibit a seller of a digital good from advertising or offering for sale a digital good as defined to a reasonable person would understand you know like blinking tags on it you do not own this i think as far as you need to go but uh, this is the step in the right direction so i wonder valve will have to change this for california but valve is pretty good about like well if we had to do it for you know insert country here for like past cock-ups they just roll yeah. it out everywhere right like why have like little special thing yeah why get, create more work for yourselves when you can actually oh, be doing oh. a good and get some uh, good oh my god publicity I, I, out of it i, I just realized <laughs> they're just gonna switch to get Get it now. You're not buying anything. You're going to get it. Get is, you, you know, short and punchy. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's, that's uh, one of the things. Can we yeah, go back no, to using some Yoink? Way. <laughs> Yoink this game for nine ninety nine. I do not want to surrender Yoink to the corporate overlords. They're yeah, doing enough no. Yoinking as it is. <laughs> that's they how don't you need kill, the word. That's how you kill Yoink. <laughs> Yoink's dead, bro. <laughs> Yo, I, I'm, we're we're going to have to use the uh, bring, summoning bring circle of no, Jordan's Yoink backyard is the that's been worked on to bring Yoink back. So, uh, is, I'm bringing, I'm bringing it's it back. Still, I'd say it's Jordan's going to be out here with like a proton pack <laughs> power washer, like, just in case. Yeah. Pr pr but, proton yeah, it, power it is, washer. There's at least some leeway in the, um, in the way that the law is, at least currently in its current state, for games that are not services. Uh, if your game is fully playable offline, there's no DRM or anti-cheat or a central server that would artificially limit your ability to do with your digital copy as you would with your physical copy, then yes, you are technically still having that uh, purchase, that sale, that... And uh, th this this also does not... You call um, it. <laughs> this also doesn't apply to subscription services. There are some uh, yes, provisions. Right. Because well. subscription services, you know that the moment you stop paying the subscription, you can't access the thing anymore. Fair. Wait, what? Absolutely. <laughs> I think this is good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you, if you like, suck and don't know how to download stuff. You, you gotta look at it like, <laughs> this. inform the consumers, because ultimately mm -hmm. this is how you affect change, is by fucking with their wallets. Not mm -hmm. consumers, but the companies. Like I said, you know, just don't buy it. And if you're thinking like, wait a minute, I'll buy this. What, what happens to it? Like, I, I can't own this. And I'm like, no, well, I'm not going to buy it. What does publisher, you know, enough people get this crazy idea in their head of like ownership. You're like, I would like to purchase that. And they're like, well, we need to like make sure that they can keep it and it doesn't go away. Then they start having the things. And you're like, we could increase chickens. We could increase sales. <laughs> If it immediately doesn't die. <laughs> yeah. We can, we can, As we, it turns uh, out, people like, well, you know, well, retaining things. <laughs> that, 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 that's long-term planning, but we don't do that here. Well good, done. Good Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, if you want to get in contact with us, scream in our direction. The easiest way to do that is just go ahead and drop a comment in the YouTube video or over on Patreon. We'll get in touch with you there. Or you can head over to linuxgamecast.com. we got a contact button couple of things you know just make sure you know if you want to come on the show you got a crowdfunding campaign a audio video questions go over to the interfacing linux send an email to no reply at linuxgamecast.com 
And if it's good enough, we'll get back to it right here on this very show. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we dared talk about Hotel Nabora. And some people took Nabora issue with that. Nabora beat Windows! Oh, it's the best! <laughs> Pedro, have you heard about Matrix? <laughs> I, 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 saw that, I saw that movie. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so that video got a bit of traction for whatever reason. You know, it gave people an excuse to like fight in the comments about, like, my distribution's better than yours. And a recurring theme throughout the comments, enough to where, like, it, made, it makes me smile when I read it now. And I think about the person who shows up, you know, when we were talking about, like, Discord, they're like, well, have you heard of Matrix? I'm like, you mm -hmm. do more damage to Matrix than Discord ever could. So Glenn writes in about the most common thing that I've heard, and I wanted to give it a mention. I'm not picking on you, Glenn, because it's good you brought it up. You put everything pretty well together. So, uh, yeah, Gl Glenn writes in and says, Why in the world do you benchmark on Novara when you could benchmark on Kachios? Kachios <laughs> destroys Novara. In game benchmarks, if you set it up right, if you see real, if you want to see the real defeat of Windows, ain't you guys Linux people? But you probably did not have the Windows <laughs> patch that picks, fixed the issue around CI. It's around a 29% uplift on Windows right now. Things are messy on both sides now in a way, but Cyberpunk plays pretty darn good on Linux. Ah, uh, so yeah, no, I have a problem. I'm gonna with start finishing choice. most of my um, professional communications with, <laughs> but Cyberpunk plays pretty darn good on Linux. Period. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Yep. Yeah, no, I have a problem with that choice of words. It's like. Cache OS destroys Nabara in game benchmarks destroys. if you set it up right. Yep. Do you know what else destroys Nabara uh, in benchmarks if you set it up right? Windows 11. Ubuntu. BIOS. Haiku. <laughs> and I am from outer space. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just mentioning, you know, the, um, the Linux uh, distros. Literally any Linux I'm distro. I'm going to give BSD if you a gun, up, Pedro, right? then we'll see who destroys who. Is that the sequel to Scroll with a gun? Who's gonna win? Cache OS or BSD with a gun? BSD with a gun. All right. Um. <laughs> now, if I'd said BSD with a thigh master, it'd been a different story. <laughs> now, who, who do you think would win against Cache OS or BSD in like one of those knife fights where they like tie the two guys' arms together and they gotta like knife at each other? Well, then we have the car drive through the outfield randomly. <laughs> yeah, you know, we turned it into Pro Thunderbolt. Absolutely. Course. Who's going to be the yeah, gorgeous yeah. honey, though? I guess it's me. I'm the gorgeous honey. <laughs> Go for it. Dude, I don't, like, at the end of the day, like, I, I yes, uh, we, we are Linux people, but we're, we're old Linux people that have been doing Linux. We've had Linux all over our Linuxes for uh, me 30 years, man. These guys for well over a decade each. We're, you get to the point where distributions don't matter at all. Not even a little bit. Fif 15 years. Holy shit. Yeah. I've been around Linux it's, since the nineties, um, man. Like it doesn't like I, I don't care. And I, I, you have preferences. Like for me, nineteen years. <laughs> how about this? Let me know in the comments. What do you look for in the distribution? Like for you old timers out there, okay, okay. This, this one's like a little more narrow. I just look for something that's a good building base because I'm going to build my own kernels. I am. I'm going to build my own applications, and I want something that's basically just out of my way. It doesn't fight me on anything, doesn't throw in any like weird attempts at like niceties. Like when I see something like KDE coming from an old KDE zealot, this is kind of weird to say. Um, they, or even the GNOME desktop, like that whole unification. I'm like, oh no, light that stuff on fire. I'm anti that. I, I want to be able, I'm still like old school mind with Linux. I want to mix and match. I, I want to have GTK looking fugly as hell next to QT. And I'm like, yeah mismatch like that's just how i grew up there's got to be some of you out there what do you look for in a distribution jordan other than like and i'm talking about niceties because i'm like if you can get me into command prompt more great if you can get me to a command prompt with networking we're done i mean yeah i'm 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 kind of at that point too i like fedora because it's the thing i've been using and i don't want to have to switch over and uh i mean i for for i've been using debian as a work daily driver some sometimes there, there there there's that minute. How do you every, deal every, with every, this though? Because I had every, every, it's it's about twice a day where I type in apt when I mean yeah, type in DNF. Exactly where DNF. I'm going. Yeah. Yes, because I did uh, those two things with Fedora on interfacing Linux, and 
that week I had the test bench in here with Fedora. I damn near had a nervous breakdown. In that. Yeah, so so what, what what you do to extra fuck yourself up is you Alias. install DNF <laughs> on 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 Debian and you install apt on Fedora because you can do both of those things. <laughs> just hate, if you really just want to hate yourself forever. You, you see the evil temptress, which is Fedora, hit that because I typed in apt and it came up with that search and was like, You're trying to install I'm like, no, I'm not. No. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll do that for you if you want. Yeah. Like, nah. Uh that, 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 is, that is what I like about Fedora. It's just like, yeah, you can fucking do it. Yeah, Why not? Yeah, yeah sure. I think anybody who's ever had to like go tango with, um, you know, CentOS or RHEL, like once you walk out of that experience, like everything else is handy. It's all, it's all just text files on a file system yeah. at the end of the day. Like that, that's what it is. Whatever fights you least. And like, if you want that like nice little, um, Linux hog, you know, that like cohesive feel that some people want, like that's cool. There's options out there, but when it comes down to like performance, Cache OS might be fast. I don't know. No, no, um, Nobra. I want to call it Nobra, even though it's Nobara. Fast, clear. That's probably still around. Like all these things, like the fastest I, Linux distribution is one you can run the easiest for you. And that, that's it at the end of the day, man. Like there's not enough of us out there to be like having these little slap bites about like your distribution sucks. Calm I, down. I, I, I have one slap fight. Is it Nobara, Nobra, or Nobara? It's Hotel like, Nobra. How, how is it supposed to be pronounced? Um, I think it's Nobara. <laughs> or okay. Nobara, if you want to give it the English pronunciation. The, 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 the Jalapeno pronunciation. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, no Bera. We have a time honored tradition of misannunciations. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get out of here, hey, if you stuck around this long, you like the live show, we do it every Saturday, normally at 8 p.m. If you are a patron, huh? You can hop into our super secret Discord along with Twitch subs and uh, come listen to the pre-pre super shows. In, or if you're an executive producer, all the way up there, you get a live video feed as well. You want to find out about that? Visit the support tab over at LinuxGameCast.com, linked in the description. As a patron, you get the live and uncut. So if you like this show, we give you this in podcast format. We give you the uncut, which is about three hours in podcast format, plus downloadable videos, a bunch of things. You early access stuff. We got just just go check it out. We would really appreciate it. We got Amazon wishlist. We got a merch store. We got the storefront. You know, all the stuff that you'd normally have for uh, three yahoos talking about Linux games on a Saturday night. <laughs> but we'd appreciate it if you just share the show. Tell people about it. Tell your friends. Don't tell cats. Jordan, used to say, we had a problem with that. Too many cats were watching the show. And raccoons. <laughs> and then one died. <laughs> the raccoons were gentlemen and uh, the, 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 upstanding. I, I, I gave that raccoon cats. away for free and someone took it. <laughs> Someone opened up the box <laughs> because they didn't believe that there was a free raccoon inside and they were wrong. It's time to cue the music. If you want to get in touch with me, I do the social media thing. Go check out interfacinglinux.com. If you're curious about how all this stuff is stuck together in the studio, or if you got questions, you want to talk to old man Vin about it, I'd be happy to help you out. Get in touch with me. I'm on X at Vinstone on our federated timeline, mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm just at Vin and I'm probably still the only Vin on Blue Sky, and I don't really do the Facebook, but Linux Gamecast has a Facebook. Go there and do whatever you do on Facebook, man. I don't know. I'm Jordan, and I am 36% faster than Nobara How when it you? comes to running up flights of stairs. Follow me on Mastodon at the Burning Fool, or no, at Frojo at MastodonLinuxGamecast.com, <laughs> on Twitter at the Burning Fool, or on Blue Sky at Frojo at BSky.app. Nah. And you can easily benchmark me uh, in I can using LibXML in 50k increments. Uh, <laughs> you can find me at unaccounted for at mass.linuxgamecast.com. That is the uh, the one true Mastodon instance, and you should totally follow me there. Uh, uh, the other ones are all fake. <laughs> all right, you Linux loving miscreants. Time for some credits. Bye bye. They're spinning so fast. Look at them. <laughs> Look at them go. They're drilling through the floor. Well, we're drilling through space. We got to thank our advisors. They are Artharan, and that's it. And our executive producers, <laughs> one, two, three, four, Ian, Ishep, Kraducky, Drummer, the Targos, Barbara, M. Scott, Atomic Mike, and our little Nikki fans, Tree Sloth, Eggy, Basil, Empty, and Casey Clism. And the Sea Monsters, I think Joe, John, Dirty Dean, Angel, Dementor, System T, RL, Ryder X, Mechanin, Nehemiah, Veritanuda, Tredge, and Mike, and the Death Notes, Redisk. Mark J, Tara, Oil of Hope, Benjamin, Nova, Chad, Romeo, Nubbin, Turnover, Martin, Renee, Leonardo, Dodger, Kim, Chris, Steve, 
and Jill. And more Steve. They're there. <laughs> oh, man. All of our beautiful chairlings, Jolly Steve. Ha, there are so many more Steves. APKDDT. Yes, there's at least two there Steves now. <laughs> Sandy and Shoddy. <laughs> That's been a fun one. Yeah, let's uh, let's all say uh, pour one out for our friends uh, working on the Wayland. Looking forward to it, and uh, maybe one day we'll roll her on, on old Wayland. <laughs> shave the whales! Don't, don't, man, don't shave the whales. Do it! I want those whale toupees. Do you think whales get thirsty? Probably. If uh, you take them out for, of the water for, for long enough, yeah, sure. For, 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 yeah, for like a, a, a femtosecond. Why don't and you calm they... down, monster Mateus? You know, I just want to take the whales out of the uh, yeah, water. Yeah. Yeah, Pedro Blackfish. <laughs> they Mateus. take themselves out of the water when they're dying. They beach themselves. <laughs> and over at Pedro's house, so where he just you know, just a canned whale from his <laughs> canned whale collection. <laughs> Dying to fire yes, everybody. The real we'll animal. see you next week. <laughs> Five dudes.